So, looking at what a US Marine goes through in boot camp. Let's get into it. You don't understand how hard that actually is. I've done that, it's so hard. This is Marine Corps Boot Camp in Paris Island, South Carolina. Before they become United States Marines, all recruits have to graduate from the Marine Corps' 13-week basic training program, which tests them physically and psychologically. No, I feel sorry for you! Hey. It's a pressure cooker for 12 weeks. Under the pressure of an intimidating drill instructor, someone that's putting you under the scrutiny of attention to detail every single day, and to a certain degree, everything you do is never going to be good enough. Everything at boot camp sucks. It's gonna hurt, it's gonna be painful, but it's only gonna hurt more if you look at it that way. Around, around, around! It's boot camp, and it's supposed to prepare you for the challenges that lie beyond. No, no, no. We spent five days at Paris Island, where we saw different companies at various stages of training. You will not run, you will walk, get on the yellow footprints right now. I said! You will do what you're told to do! Why are you told to do it? And without question, do you understand? Yes, sir! On day one of boot camp, new recruits arrive at the receiving barracks, where they take their first steps toward becoming Marines by walking through these silver hatches, symbolizing the threshold between the outside world and Paris Island. You walk through these silver hatches once and never again, do you understand? Yes, right, sir! Once inside, Recruits are processed and assigned to their platoons. Put it up! Yes, ma'am! I know you were told us to come with your hands down! Put it up in a butt! In a butt! 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 No. I'm out! But. I'm out! After graduation, Marines commit to a minimum of four years of service. Street ice, sir! Ice, sir! Upon entering the Corps, an entry-level private will earn around $20,000 a year. So straight from there, the differences between British and American, uh, it's a lot calmer on day one on British Army training now. I know this is US Marines, and I'm sure it'll be for the same as the Royal Marines. Uh, I know the US are big on putting pressure on them straight from the off. Um, that sort of shark attack I've sort of heard of before, I don't know if that was US Army or US Marines. Put them under pressure, uh, and it's constantly like that throughout. It slightly eases off towards the end. Uh, the British Army's gone the opposite way um, now as it's a lot more relaxed. It even was a lot more relaxed when I joined back in 2006. Uh, same once you pass out, we call it passing out, they call it graduating, you commit to four years. So on your third year you can sign off and it takes a full year to get out. Uh, $20,000 uh, is a year, so I think that's roughly what we get. So, yeah. $20,000 is roughly £15,000, which is roughly what um, a new recruit, once they've left training, will be earning. So very similar on time served, money, just the attitude towards the recruits is different now. We're a little bit more woke maybe, but that's the way it is. Recruits are required to make a phone call to a family member or their recruiter to let them know they've arrived. This is Recruit Hatcher. I've arrived safely at Paris Island. Please do not send any food or bulky items. They're only allowed to read the script printed for them inside the phone bank. I will contact you in seven to nine days by letter with my new address. Thank you for your support. Goodbye for now. Get in the closet. Hey, sir! Recruits are given three chances to get someone on the line. Sir, my recruit is not answering, sir. Call him again! Not every recruit is able to make a connection. Oh, poor lad. If there is no answer, hang it up and close it. No way. Aye, sir. But they won't have long to dwell on it. The Marine Corps Recruit Depot in Paris Island sits on 8,000 acres of the South Carolina Low Country. It's one of two enlisted recruit depots in the United States. The other is in San Diego, where only male recruits are trained. Interesting. Around 20,000 recruits graduate from Paris Island every year before joining the more than 180,000 Marines actively serving today. 
That's a lot, 20,000. Uh, the US, the British Army is what, 76 now? So to be churning out 20,000 a year is a huge amount. I know your population is a lot bigger, but it's cool. Take young men and women from all walks of life, all cultures. Maybe they were rich, maybe they were poor. They've got different religious backgrounds. They are the melting pot of America. And they come here with one common goal, and that's to be a United States Marine. Harris Island, South Carolina. Here, everyday Americans become Marines, the toughest fighting men in the world. Male recruits have been trained at Paris Island since 1915. Female recruits began to train there in 1949. Nice. Today, females comprise under 25% of recruits at Paris Island and approximately 8% of the United States Marine Corps, the lowest percentage of any United States military branch. I wonder if that's because of the reputation of the Marines. A recruit's day begins before the sun comes up. Their typical wake-up call is 0400, or 4 a.m. Now that's a lot earlier. British Army training, typical wake-up. A revali, we call it, is 06. Recruits endure an intense series of physical challenges. 4-3! Am I hearing that right? 4-3! Yes, sir! Fail! Some recruits arrive in better shape than others. Some never did anything more than sit on a couch, you know, as a couch potato. And some may have been collegiate athletes. So there's a vast spread of what their athletic fitness and ability is. I said. Much of their training happens here, in Leatherneck Square, where a series of intimidating obstacles comprise the confidence course. Team to go, you failed this event. Man, this looks like one more try, sir. What did I just say? I, sir. What did I just say? I, sir. Go! I, sir. The training program is progressive in nature. It starts out in a crawl, walk, run approach throughout training. 99.9% .9 of those that get here can complete all those requirements at the end of training, regardless of how they started. Hey, sir, just I'm slipping, go. please. Please help. I don't want to do this. I don't want No, I'm not. Please. Any recruit with a fear of heights gets the chance to conquer that fear, courtesy of this 47 foot tall tower. Recruits must rappel down using two different methods. For me, the rappel tower was hard because I sort of had a fear of heights. Grab below my right hand with your right hand. You have to trust the rope. So there's nothing to be worried about. You'll be safe all the time. Can you please help me? I'm trying to help you. Something's I don't want to go down. Recruits with a phobia of heights have little choice but to face their fear. One of the most dreaded parts of training is the gas chamber. Crush, 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 crush. Recruits are exposed to CS gas, more commonly known as tear gas. Once the recruits enter the chamber, they break the seals of their gas masks. You go in, you feel it instantly hit your skin, you just feel burning. Ah! Say something to me now! Feels like those few minutes felt like an hour. Around five minutes, the recruits are free. But the pain endures. So that's different to how we would do it. Uh, you would go in um, in a small group of say 10, six, whatever, however big the chamber is. And then you have to one at a time take your mask off and then read out your number, rank, name, and then they might ask you a question as well. Uh, it's funny when you see someone take their mask off, take a deep breath in and then talk. Um, to take a deep breath in before you take the mask off. But that's how we would do it. Um, and then you, they feed you out one at a time. Get 
<laughs> Definitely, you thank God for fresh air. It's really nice to be able to breathe in and not feel an instant burning sensation. <laughs> Gas chamber is important because it builds confidence. Confidence in the gear, confidence in the drill shutters, and then confidence in themselves. Now, start walking! Recruits are trained in different styles of hand-to-hand -hand combat. First thing we want to see is that straight thrust, you understand? Yes, sir! Bust them, excuse me, sir! Aye, sir! A key aspect of their martial arts training is fighting with pugil sticks. Who killed that opponent? You understand? Ah! The pugil stick techniques are intended to mirror those used in combat while using a bayonet. Here in the Marine Corps, we have a kind of a little ditty that means red is dead. Oh, yeah! Yeah! So that red side is supposed to emulate the actual knife portion of the actual bayonet mounted on the weapon. This is what we need to do. So anything that you strike with that red tip, nine times out of ten are either going to be incapacitated or laid to rest. Be cool too aggressive over there. Yeah. Honestly, it gives them an opportunity to blow off a little steam. They have a lot of pent up aggression, especially towards maybe their drill instructors. They're out there, they're actually doing what they feel like they signed up to do, which is learn how to combat the enemy. Six wickets. Recruits also practice with actual bayonets. And engage in other types of hand-to-hand -hand combat. Although male and female recruits do intersect during training, platoons are separated by gender. And although the recruit depot has experimented with integration before, the Marine Corps is the only military branch that separates male and female recruits during basic training. Yes, sir! Ready, one. According to the Corps, every Marine is first and foremost a rifleman. Recruits spend the bulk of two weeks devoted to marksmanship, the first of which sees few shots actually fired. First off is the fundamentals. They have to understand how to aim. They have to understand exactly how to breathe when they're taking that shot. They have to understand exactly how to squeeze the trigger and how to have follow through and recovery with a rifle. Combat operations is the foundation for every single Marine, regardless of what your occupation is. What it is to sit behind a rifle, look down that barrel, and be able to put lead on target. Aye, sir. You are going to swim until you pass that ladder. Aye, sir. The Marine Corps is defined as an amphibious warfare force. Therefore, swimming plays a key role in training. If you see another recruit up there, and there's more than five, you're going away. During swim week, recruits go through numerous exercises in the pool while wearing their camouflage uniforms. But training at Paris Island isn't all physical. Recruits also spend long hours in the classroom. But what may seem like downtime can end at any moment. When a drill instructor decides to order an impromptu cardio session at Paris Island, it's what's known as getting slayed. It's an experience. You realize the thing you've done to get in a sand pit, and then you realize, okay, that hurt, so let's not do that again. Physically it hurts, but me personally, I never worried about the pain I was feeling in my body. It was more thinking about the mistake I made and how I need to correct it the next time. So there's going to be some chaos because when they come here, we want to tear them down a little bit. And then we want to bring them back up in, in the mold of what it is to be a United States Marine. I love watching a Marine or even a US drill instructor just go at it. It's, it's one of the best things to watch. How do they maintain their voice? Recruit training culminates in an event known as the Crucible.
Over the course of 54 hours, with minimal sleep and food, recruits must endure realistic combat scenarios. The sounds of gunfire and shelling are played over loudspeakers mounted in the training area. It's pretty cool. Recruits are forced to work together to overcome obstacles and achieve objectives that require problem solving and strategy. Yeah, command tasks like this, is, uh, we do in all sorts of training throughout the military, you'll always see that. Um, it's great team building um, and shows like, how you can do leadership, etc. This is what we saw on the second day. The recruits had become exhausted and irritable. Cash is ready. Ready. Jump it. Jump, jump away. Oh, just jump. Jump. Not, you're not even jumping. I sir. You're just, you're just falling down. I sir. Oh, shit. I sir. You know, you go through a really rough time. Six purple. You start thinking, man, like, it's hot, I'm thirsty, my arms haven't felt this bad in my whole life. We're halfway there, come on. You just keep looking at the person to the left and right, and you're like, well, he's doing it, I gotta keep going. Uh, like, I'm not gonna let him do it on his own. Uh, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. So there's no reason not to push. Uh. Once the crucible is complete, these recruits officially become Marines. The day before graduation, friends and family see their new Marines for the first time in more than three months. that come down for graduation day that haven't seen their son or daughter in about three months immediately notice not only a physical but an intangible difference. When they walk across that parade deck on train day 70 and they graduate, they're no longer recruits, they're Marines. Meanwhile, in the barracks of Lima Company. I'm talking to you. Aye, sir. All these burritos right here. Aye, sir. Take all that trash out. Aye, sir. Brand new recruits diligently square away their racks before being warmly welcomed by their senior drill instructor. Sit up straight and look at me. Our mission is to train each one of you to become a United States Marine. Discipline and spirit are the hallmarks of a Marine. We will give every effort to train you, even after some of you have given up on yourself. Starting now, you will treat me and all other Marines with the highest respect. Physical or verbal abuse by any Marine or recruit will not be tolerated. My drill stars and I will be with you every day. Everywhere you go, you must give 100% of yourself at all times. Above all else, never quit or give up. We offer you the challenge of recruit training and the opportunity to earn the title, United States Marine. Yes! So very interesting. I've seen a Marine one before and I actually really liked that. And there is definitely some takeaways that I feel like the British military, British army could um, implement. There's certain things that, you know, we've seen Americans do that maybe the British army don't like, but the infrastructure and the facilities the Americans have because of the budget and the, the uh, area you can cover is so much better. Um, you're very lucky with that and the British Army uh, military do sort of suffer like that. Um, but we do have our training areas. The abseiling wall is awesome. They do have a high ropes at AFC Harrogate, um, but Perdright has nothing. I don't think Winchester does either. You have to go away for that sort of event to train in. But to have an abseiling wall right there is pretty cool. The hand-to-hand -hand combat is definitely something that we need to incorporate more, for sure. Uh, we definitely don't do enough of it. 
Um, it builds toughness, resilience, and it gets you prepared just in case you ever have to go into a scenario like that. The strictness, you know, Marines are constantly all over it. They're tough, they're screaming, they get slayed as they call it. We get beasted. Um, <laughs> We have to be a lot more calmer and a lot more tolerant and we can't do half the stuff. I'm not sure, you know, you don't want to constantly punish people and be horrible to them for no reason, but it's just instilling that discipline and we know the US Marines, they do, they, they love being a Marine and they do have great discipline from everything that I have seen before. Few sim sim similarities, pay, four year career, uh, is the same as us. The crew sport at the end is really cool. I think they could incorporate something like that into Purbright. Catwick have something similar. I know some of them do. I've never been to Catwick, but I know like the Paras have the mole and it's meant to be one of the toughest things you'll ever do. Um, really interesting video. Let us know what you think. Um, comment below what you want to see next and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.